Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be talking about jointing a board. I've got about a four foot long board here and we want to make this perfectly flat and true. So we would normally want to use a large jointer plane, but can you do that with a smaller four, four and a half? Let's dive in and take a look at it. So first let's take a look at the planes themselves. So this is a Stanley number no. 7. I believe it's a Type 3, so a rather old one, and one that I restored a long, long time ago. This is probably the most common jointer plane. Uh, you can get a number no. 8, which is wider um, and a little bit longer, but for most people, the number no. 7 is the one you, it's kind of your go-to jointer. The reason it's a jointer is it's long enough to rest all the way across this sole. So you can kind of use this as a straight edge, and it will tell you if the board is straight most of the time. Here I have a uh, Stanley four and a half. Uh, this is one of my favorite go-to planes. And you can see it's a quite a bit shorter than my seven. And so we can joint with a short plane like this. The reason I'm using this and not a four is my, currently my four is set up to be a smoother and this one is a little bit wider. So it's kind of closer to the seven in size. So I want to show you basically how do you joint with a smaller plane as well as what are the differences between a regular jointer plane and a shorter plane. So here's the piece of wood we're going to be working with. It is a piece of cedar, so relatively easy to work with, and it'll just make it a little bit faster and easier to show you the methodology behind it. And currently, this has a bit of a concavity to it. It's lower here in the middle. So here you should be able to see how there's a good bit of a gap here, and it gets less and less and less, and it's touching over here, and it's touching at the other end as well. So this lets us know that there is a concavity here. But we have a straight edge on the board that's telling us that. I want to be able to do this without the straight edge. I want to do it with just the plane. So if I grab my four and a half, I can still get a good shaving from end to end. All the way along. And what's happening is that this has such a short sole that it's actually riding that valley all the way across. But if I come over here with my number seven and I start back here, I'll get a shaving at this end. And then nothing, 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 and then shaving right at that end. And so what happens is this rests on the high spot here and on the high spot here and the blade doesn't touch in the middle. So as long as I take an even shaving, a little bit from this end and nothing, and then a little bit from this end, I'm going to slowly bring these hills down until they meet here in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do here with this one. I'm just going to keep going and as I go, the shavings at either end will get longer and longer. I'm also making sure when I start, I'm putting all my weight here on the nose. So I'm putting all my weight there, not putting any weight back here. I want to make sure when my hand is here, it's not pushing down back here. So I'm sliding across the board. And then when I get to the other end, I'm transferring. So I'm actually moving my hand back. I may even put my wrist back here to put some more weight back here. And I'm not putting any weight on the nose. I'm just letting the saw or the plane do the work here. So weight on the nose to begin with weight on the tail to end with. And that way I make sure that I'm referencing back here and I'm getting good flat surface. So we're going to keep going until we get a shaving from one end all the way to the other. After a few more strokes I've got a shaving that goes all the way from one end to the other. Nice and the way I like it. So I know that this is perfectly flat now because I started with a belly here. I know that I've taken off the high points here until they've gotten down to this point. So if I bring my straight edge over here and I set it on, I'll see that indeed there is no light underneath that at all. Nice and straight. And if I get down right at the same level as the joint, you can see it's perfectly tight all the way across. I never brought this straight edge in here to check it. I just trusted my plane that it is flat and it will tell me when this is done. Now, if I want to do this with my four or four and a half, I'm going to have a little bit more problem because it won't tell me when it is flat, but I can still do it with this. The thing is I need to use a straight edge. I can't do it without a straight edge if I'm using a smaller plane. With a smaller plane, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check it. I'm going to see if it's flat and I'm going to see where I'm high. And I know that I'm high here and I'm high there. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time. I'm going to do five or six strokes at this end. I'm going to do five or six strokes at this end. Just hit the high spots. Then I'm going to bring this back in. I'm going to see 
oh, now I'm actually a little bit low right here at the tips and my high spots are right about here. So then I'm gonna do five or six strokes right here to here. And then I'm gonna do five or six strokes from either point into around here. And then I'm gonna do five or six strokes from either point into around here. And every time I'm gonna come back and check it with the square, check it with the straight edge, check it with the straight edge, until I see that it's flat and I get a nice shaving all the way from one side to the other. So it takes a little bit longer, but with a little bit of practice, you can still get a good clean shaving all the way from one side to the other with a number four. You just need another tool to tell you if it's flat. Whereas with a number seven, number eight, maybe a number six, this will tell you if it's flat and you don't need the other tool. But that's with the concavity. What if the board is convex? Let's take a look at that. So next, this board is actually curved upwards. So we have a convex surface in here. If I put my straight edge on it, you can see how the straight edge will rock side to side. And there's actually about uh, almost a quarter inch out of true on this. And so the problem with this is, if I grab my four and a half again, and we come along this, I can still get a shaving from end to end. And as it just rides up and over that curve. And then if I grab my seven, I can still get a shaving with a seven all the way from end to end. And so you can see in this case, I'm gonna have a problem because this isn't going to tell me if it's true. And this isn't going to tell me if it's true. The only thing that'll tell me it's true is another straight edge that I can put on there and check it. Now one with this much of a bow, I can get down and eyeball it, and that will give me a good idea. But I wanna show you how to fix this without the straight edge. So in this case, I'm gonna start with the number five here, and I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna just take a few shavings off the middle until they don't take any more shavings. And so right there, I'm not taking any shavings here in the middle. And so that means from here to here, it is actually slightly concave here in the middle. And that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna back it up, I'm gonna plane, rather than just doing this area, I'm gonna plane this area. And then I'm gonna do it again to this area until I get this whole thing slightly concave. So here I've spent a little while on it. And now I'm not getting anything here in the middle. I'm still getting a shaving here at this end. And I'm getting a shaving at this end but nothing in the middle. So that lets me know that my high spots are here and here. So now I'm gonna go one or two more times until I get a full shaving from end to end. Here's about a half a shaving in the middle. Now we're back to a full shaving again. And then here, there's still about a half a shaving in the middle. Just scratching there, let's do a little bit more, should get it this time. There we go. Now we have a full shaving from end to end. And so that tells me, as long as my plane is true, that this is nice and straight. So if I wanna double check, I can bring my straight edge in, set it up on here, and I don't see any light coming through this all the way along. So that means we're good and flat. Man, I love happy little wood curls. This is one of these really exciting things when you get a board that's true and flat and you get these beautiful curls coming off it. The world is happy. But until that point, there's a lot of little tweaking and things. Now, one thing I didn't talk about much is, is the top of this square. And once you've been doing it for a while, your hand knows when it's square. Just sliding around, you can feel it on the edge and you know if you're leaning one way or the other. And so after doing it for a while, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be absolutely square because I know what square feels like. But when you're first beginning, you're gonna to wanna to be checking this and making sure it's square. If it's not square, then put more pressure on the other side of the plane. Some people will move the lateral adjuster side to side so that they can cut more on one side or the other, but I find just moving the plane over and putting a little bit more pressure on one side after a few strokes, you'll bring it back to where it needs to be. Also, the astute among you will be able to count and realize that I'm only doing one board. Usually when you're jointing the edge of a board, you're gonna be doing two of them so that they can mate up. And the nice thing about doing it this way is what you can do is clamp those two boards together side by side so that when they're done, you can pull them out and butt them up. And that way, if the plane does lean a little bit one way or the other, you'll have compensating angles that will work together. But the reason I'm showing it in one board is that it's the exact same method for one board as two boards. It's just if you have two boards, it's a little bit wider. But I'd say around 80 to 90% of the time I'm doing it, it's just one board because I'm truing up the edge of a board. I'm going to rip this down. So if this board is currently what, seven inches wide, and I want it to be three inches wide, 
I need a true edge running along one side so that I can put a marking gauge on it and reference off that true edge and put a mark in. That way I know my mark in the middle of the board is also true and flat because it's running parallel to that edge that I just jointed. And so that's where I'm going to be using this most of the time, is truing up an edge so that I can get something I can cut off of. So even if your plane is only a number four or even like a number two, you can still joint an edge. You don't need a number eight. But a number seven, number eight, they do make it a little bit easier. So I really want to show you don't need to have a big plane to do it. You can do it with a little plane. You just need something else to tell you if it's straight. Now, that being said, you don't even need to have a perfectly straight, straight edge. A lot of times your eye can do the work for you. If you eyeball down the board, you'll be able to see where the high spots are. And 90% of the time, that is far more than accurate enough. You'll be able to look down and say, oh yeah, I have a high spot here and I have a high spot here. I can bring in the plane, hit those two spots, eyeball it again and then hit the new high spots and then eyeball it again and hit the new high spots until I have a nice straight line running all the way down. And an eyeball and a hand plane can really do a good job. But, but having a big plane is kind of nice because they tell you when it's flat. As long as you're careful when it comes to convex surfaces because those can be tricky. They, uh, they'll lie to you because a jointer plane will still ride up and over a convex surface. So I hope this answered a few questions for you. I'm sure it created many more as that does with woodworking. Let me know your questions, comments, ideas down in the comments below, and I'll get to as many of those as I possibly can. This is kind of a basic beginner subject, but it is one that you really need to master before you can get onto other things because you need to know how the plane works and how some planes will ride with them and some planes won't. So I hope this helped you out. Also, I want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. This was a topic that was suggested by one of the patrons. If you'd like to uh, be a part of that, I have links to patreon.com as well as there is the join button down below where you can become a member on the channel here. It is the patrons who support this channel that keep it going. So thank you for that. That means more than I can possibly say. If you do ever meet someone who's scrolling over here on the side, say thank you to them because they are the ones making Wood by Right happen. So I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Heidi ho there, neighbor.